Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here on the couch. Welcome back from yeah, your travel. Yeah, we've missed you a couple times. I know. Yeah, I you know. know. So this is your first time on the new it's, seat. It's my first. These are cool. Aren't I got to tell you. We sit up nice and right. straight. I, I was pieces. at graduation, fashion show for my daughter who yeah. had her collection, and then I don't know what else, traveling. Absolutely. But I'm well, back. we have a guest on the show today, Abby Rosenberg, who we're meeting for the first time, or at least I am. Me too. And, uh, Excited to have you here. Welcome, Thank welcome. You. And you're associated with the Sharon Timlin race, and in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you live here in town. I live in Hopkinton the last 13 years. Okay. okay. And and where'd you uh, come from? Yeah. Uh, Newton, then Framingham, and then here. You just kept going yeah. west. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And west. kids. Like you have kids. I have two boys. Yep, they're in ninth and tenth grade. Awesome. And you, men you mentioned something about Grand March tonight. So uh, yeah, one kids of them is going to the prom. Oh. But tonight is oh, so one March. of your boys is going to the prom? So yes. So he got asked by a, a junior girl? Yes. How oh. <laughs> That happens. So That's fun. Is that the sophomore or the freshman going? The sophomore is going. Yeah. So, um, is this your first grand grade as, um, Melissa? Yeah, same grade as Melissa. Yeah, yeah. yeah first, first one. one. So you know what to expect. You're already uh, going to stake really, out. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have fun. Yeah, it'll Get there good. early and try to find an aisle. Okay. Well, she's, after, she's also one of the coordinators for the after prom party because oh. she's a sophomore parent. Oh yeah, not coordinator, just a volunteer. Yeah. Because you're the, um, but you're the parent for just the, the sophomore. parent that needs she's to stay there. She's the parent liaison for the whole sophomore class. Oh well, then yeah, oh. you're in the know. Yeah, yes. for school yeah. council. For school council. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So you're Very busy, cool. busy woman. Yes. Tell us more. What else do you do? Let's see. Well, I work. Um, what do you do? I'm a nurse practitioner oh, and awesome. a psychologist. So I do psychotherapy. So where do you, oh, where's okay. your? Um, I office? I work out of my home in okay. Hopkinton, and um, I also work at Leslie University. Got it. So very good. Um, yeah. All you good. know Kathy Bowman, right? Yeah. So she you, she went to Leslie and loved it. So you and, go all the way into Cambridge. And Don Chris Satterfield's going there okay. next year. Okay. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Just one day a week. Just the academic year. Okay. Work with students there. So. Oh very cool. Um, yeah. Very cool. All good. Um, my kids have been involved in this Sharon Timlin Memorial event since they were two. Wow. So okay. this makes so it with the, uh, how, how many years? the 13th year. year. So sure, we've kind of, you moved to town. yeah, so we've kind of all lived and breathed this event. Um, what Tell us more you? about it, first of all. Just put some framing around okay. this. Okay, well, the, the, let's see, it started, yes, this please. will be our 13th year. Okay. It started real small, just kind of grassroots. Um, I can tell you after why I started why I wanted to start yeah, why? it. Tell us why. Okay, well, my, um, our very, very good friend, George Mazareas, who lives in the Hunt, um, best of friends. We did everything together, my husband and, and I and Cynthia and George. Um, and they had just moved into their dream house. He started not being able to like close his newborn's diapers very well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. kept on, the problem with ALS is it just takes so long to diagnose because the symptoms can be really subtle. Right. So um, just, it ended up happening that he was diagnosed with ALS, um, and really all I knew was, okay, Lou Gehrig's disease, whatever. You'll get cure, you know, you'll get treatment. And um, he was, what we came to find out, which most people probably do know, is that there's really no cure for ALS. Um, it's been, what, 70 something years since yeah. Lou Gehrig, and there's still no treatment, no cure, and oh. it's, it's really a, you know, death sentence. It's debilitating. Yeah. Because it's a very slow, debilitating. Yes. Now, how yes. did you connect? Yeah. Why did you do this with the motivation for your friend George and the connection with My, Mike, Mike Timlin and his sister? Yes. Well, um, let's see. So George said to me, I said to George, okay, we got to do something about this. This is when I started to really figure out how bad this was. And he said, um, you know, I got to ask you to do three things. If anything happens to me or my wife, uh, take care of our daughter. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was an easy one. Um, I want you to raise awareness about this because we're such a fractured fundraising group. No one knows anything about it. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll try. And uh, <laughs> then he said, and I want you to raise money because we need a cure. Mm -hmm. He said, I want a cure for this. Mm -hmm. um, he's still alive 13 years later. Wow. Um, he's on a breathing machine. Um, he is completely paralyzed yep. and he speaks, um, but he's, he's so with it. That's oh, what's yeah. the horror. Yeah. That's, That's the, the horror. horror. Yeah. Yeah. This is oh. all yeah. intact. Yeah. 
but your whole yeah. motor skills and, yeah. and mm. you know. Yeah, so he communicates by blinking and it's, it's, it's painful, but it's mm. great it's that he's, you know, part of our lives. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Anyway, so I just decided I'd just moved here. I was a runner. I just decided to team up with the running club and start this event. And it was real small at first. And I met Mike because I was looking for organizations that raised money for treatment, not for like helping patients, which yes. right. you know both right, right, of them right. are important. But I really wanted to raise money to get that cure yeah. so that yeah. it might help people in the future um, yeah. get some treatment. And um, Mike's mom had just passed away from ALS. And somehow we just, I don't know, we all connected. And um, they have been great. They come every year. Um, they're so appreciative for this town and what we've done. And I mean, I see them, I mean, because it becomes like a carnival almost there, too, with yeah. booths and, yeah. you know, activities for the kids and everything yeah. else in the field. And he sits there at a table Sign for hours, yeah. signing yeah. things, things like that, yeah. greeting yeah. people. Mm. Um, they are awesome it people. It seems very, like, kind and patient. Like, cause people are just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they are awesome people. Um, I feel so blessed to have, have met them through this awful cause. Um, but... You know, we, we, our goal with the Sharon Timlin event is to make it a great, fun community event. We like to give back. Um, like new this year, we just decided to do a high school scholarship. Mm. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. We were giving $1,000 to a, a senior, graduating senior who's pursuing secondary education. Excellent. Um, so that's new. Um, Excellent. It, we just like to give back because the sure. schools, every, you know, the kids, it, all the families who come and have fun, they help us, they've helped us raise almost $1.5 million. Wow. wow. So, yeah. Now, so, now, so naming it, it the Sharon, though, is, yeah. that's his sister, isn't it? No. That Sharon is Timlin is Mike's mom. Oh, okay. okay. Tracy, who also comes every year, is his sister. So they all, the whole family comes. Gosh. Okay. So when is the race this the year? The race is Saturday, June 18th. Okay. Um, we do it rain or shine. We have, um, we have so much going on. We have 8.30, the 5K starts. At 10 o'clock, we have a new color run this year, which for first <gasps> through sixth graders, yeah, it's full. Ah, no, but you have a color run. Yes. It's in, oh, and what does that mean? I've never heard that. Color it's going to be so exciting. It's when yeah, you throw it's you'll have to people. Oh, so yeah. it's the dry powder, so you wear white and you get oh, poofed with colors and you come back. How fun All is different that? multicolored. Yeah, it's going to oh, be really fun. So, so some pictures. So that we're having, we have awesome, um, we have some really nice big poppy, um, silent auction items oh, cool. um, we wow. uh, raffles games for every age so it's gonna be a real party in yeah. town live Somebody, music yeah. Um, yeah it's a blast hot acoustics? Go hang yep. out and stuff like that love hot acoustics <laughs> yes, yes. Really yes. Hot sorry i'm a groupie i, 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 I love, love groupies yeah. but there's a good band and a great people yeah. in it hot acoustics plays um the, uh, high school band oh, okay. yeah, um, the they're, kids, they're, yeah. they're gonna open up for them um, they did it at the 300th, too. Yeah. Yes. They, yes. They opened up for that. Um, the middle school a cappella group is June 18th. Anthem. Mark your calendar. Yeah. yeah. So it, if it does rain, we'll, we'll, it'll still be It'll just as much No time. rain, no rain, but, no rain. But usually rain. it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. that's so, so awesome. Go back to, so over the years, you raised uh, $1.5 Almost. Almost. Okay. Um, so hopefully this year you'll... Yeah, we're, we're hoping. So... Do you work with a particular group? Do you give this money? Do doctors and, and organizations apply and, and grants and you give them money? How do you um, yeah. uh, use this money to support a cure? So we looked for a place to give our money and there's tons of, well not tons, yeah, but yeah. considering there's a lot of different ALS groups. Um, the Angel Fund where is where we funnel our money. They are 100% volunteer. Okay. Um, and they give all of their money, which we give it to them. I think we're their biggest fundraiser. Okay. Um, we give it to UMass Medical School, where okay. uh, Dr. Robert Brown, I don't know if, yep. you know if you've heard of him, he yeah. is um, in, involved in great, I mean, we're really hoping that he can go to human trials this year. Wow. Um, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, if we're not gonna help like the Georges and unfortunately the president of the Angel Fund just was diagnosed with ALS. Um, wow. Yeah, just devastating. The irony of that. So, I know. Jeez. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, we're all volunteers. We all work really hard. We all, when you meet someone with this disease, you just, you just feel like a need to do and something. And I know the Hopkins Running Club has really embraced this race. Yes. It's become like their flagship race yes. every year. 
yep. and then the last few years of they've, as they've started the Couch to 5K program, yes. that has become the, the goal is that the feeder that you run in the Sharon Tim. Yeah, I love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I walked it. I didn't well, run it. Okay. I walked it. But yeah, uh, I mean, and I've, I've actually, and I, um, I've always gone because yeah. the kids have been doing something or volunteering with something. Yeah, everyone so takes part, is which is okay what I love. If you walk and if you're not a runner, yeah, runner, yeah, you can just I get tell people. Do it. Is it still even open for runners? Usually yes, sold Yes, the 5K out. is totally open for uh, walkers, runners. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tell people, if you want to crawl, crawl it. <laughs> just come <laughs> just out and go. move. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's, That's great. That's so great. That is oh, awesome. a wonderful thing that you've committed yourself to. And, and, uh, I mean, I know, the pay, I know the permit all went through this week, so it's all set. Yes. And stuff. I was there when all that got presented. And um, the um, and it, it, you know it's kind of weird because you, you come, you never really leave much of the campus of the school. No, just you go, part you go of the down race. by like Kalala Farm Road, yeah. and think, but you, you it's a lot of yeah. loop road, and you come in the back side of the track. Yeah. Oh, so, so no, I'm just, just around the, um, and I know you're not a doctor or whatever, but yeah. you know I'm just still struck. I mean, as you think, just thinking about ALS. Are there, what are doctors saying, or the medical researchers, are they make, I know there's no cure and they're far away from it, but are they seeing any hope in yes. terms of what they're figuring out? Yes, what are and um, when Rich Kennedy called me and told me about his diagnosis, he's the president of the Angel Fund, I just was devastated and I said, you know, what? I actually was almost thinking like, you know, I can't keep on doing this every year. Oh my God. Yeah. And I said, what can I what do? And, and he yeah. said, you have got to do what you're doing because you have, because of you guys at in Hopkinton, we now have isolated these mutant genes that now we can figure out how to treat. What? Yeah. Wow. I have that. I do. That means there we go. And he said to me, he says, if it's, oh not, if it's not yeah. for me, he said, I am hell or high water. I'm getting in a human <coughs> trial, but yeah. it doesn't help me. If it doesn't work for me. It's going to help for all of these Someone. kids we know right. that, right. you know, in their generation could so get diagnosed. Two, oh, that's inspiring. So two summers ago was the rage of, you know, the ice, ice bucket, bucket challenge. Repeat. And I think that right. really elevated the visibility of ALS, yes. uh, you yep. know, basically worldwide. Yep. But it started just north of Boston the, yeah. from yes. an individual. And um, I don't think I know anyone who didn't do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Did that, that was brilliant. Did that seem to spur the next year of Timlin? Did it have more? Um, that year we did an, a lab. But every couple of years we do a lab tour where we invite people oh. to see what we're actually doing with the money. Mm. Um, and um, he, his parents came and spoke. He couldn't be there. And um, my son actually did a whole video on him, which may be on our website. I don't know. But um, it, I think it, it helped us to get psyched. Like we've right. got, here's this guy yeah. who's so young, who has a baby. We've right. got to do something about this. So, Absolutely. So I have a question for you. When you think about it, that you're in your 13th year um, and what you've been doing, if you could wave the magic wand <laughs> and say, I want this event too, what would, where is this event in five years? What's happening? What are your goals around this as a fundraiser and an event? Well, I guess we've always had two, two big goals. Um, one is to provide, like to host a great fun day for the community because mm -hmm. the community, I love this community. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've, they've helped us so much. My, the committee that works with me, I mean, I could never do this by myself. Mm -hmm. I know Ellen Rodder very well, yeah, and Ellen, she l loves being involved yes, in this. Yes, she just got involved this year. Um, mm -hmm. So many wonderful people. Some you want to give a few shout-outs? That'd be awesome. Oh, I, I'm going to forget some okay, Dave, Dave Kruger is the co-event director, okay. Gail Welsh, um, Colleen Allen, Stephanie Whalen. I, if I forget That's anyone, Stephanie. they're going to kill me. <laughs> All of you <laughs> are some people. Well, yes, but uh, sure. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. If you could... But if you could, like, fat, but, if I could, but if I could wear the magic day, wand, yeah. it would be, yes, hosting an awesome day, mm -hmm. beautiful sunshine, everyone having fun, but ultimately raising so much money that we could really continue to make an impact. Absolutely. So have, have you thought about having this um, event in multiple cities, like the Relay for Life? You yeah. Know, is this something that um, you've considered, or where, you know, it's what a are your thoughts? great idea. Yeah. Great idea. Um, I just need time, you know. Yeah, you're <laughs> only one person. Oh, so. a volunteer. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Gee, and and you've got the palm, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. It's a great idea. Uh, maybe something food for thought there. Exactly. So, just structurally, are, is this, 
it, it's just the race, or are you a? No, it's a full, it's a full it's a day. It's a nonprofit um, kind of organization that yeah, supports this. Yeah, and last year, uh, this year, we started the, our first trying, like kind kind of making it more than just one day, mm -hmm. which limits our fundraising. We sure. did the February month Eat for a Cure. Okay. Oh. Um, which was awesome, and we raised over $3,000 with um, Yogurt Beach in Hopkinton and Dynasty, oh, right. Dynasty right. Restaurant right. Yeah. and a couple other non-Hopkinton restaurants okay. helped us. Well, I think Not Your Average Joe's was in it. Um, was it in I think it was Bertucci's. Bertucci's. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, cool. so we did um, that this year, which was, so we try to do new things every year. We, we have... Um, the dunk tank and the teachers, even, even the, yeah, the yeah, and even teacher. even the fact that school's over, they're still coming out, which yeah. is so nice. Oh, um, that nice. that's so great. Yeah, this time it ends what the day before. It's yeah, the last day of school. Yeah, and then the next day is this. Yeah, very cool. So we're hoping we get a big turnout, uh, just just people mm -hmm. coming with big hearts. Absolutely. That's really what we. That's that's my magic wand. Yep. I'm now, excited. Um, what that is the website? Fun. Oh, it's www.sharontimlinrace.org. Okay. So okay. we'll have, um, it'll be printed off on the thing, too. Okay. So you can, you, you can still run, you can still register, you can still walk. And I'm assuming you can still look for sponsors. Yes. People who just want to donate and be involved. Is there any way, are the t-shirts already ordered? Are they still T-shirts are ordered, so we, we wouldn't get on the back of the t-shirt, but we're always looking. We have some great Hopkinton sponsors, and again, I'll probably forget someone, but Select. I can like mm -hmm. read some of them there. Yeah, Select, well, is a big, oh, Select is a big oh, one. No, oh, but no, they're the same. Year. Uh, oh, Webster shit. First Credit Union, Elizabeth Price Blake, Shoppers. Blake Orthodontics. Right um, here in this building. Isn't Price Chopper, yeah. Elizabeth donates a full set of braces start to finish. Wow. Wow. Um, That's great. Yeah. Uh, so, we, yeah, we've got a lot of great 26.2 Foundation, um, mm -hmm. a lot of good sponsors. Oh. Yeah, this is the 26.2 Foundation. Yeah. I don't know about today. <laughs> and I think I actually have an idea for a couple sponsors too. Really? For you yeah. Afterwards, so, um, yeah, but anything yeah. we can do to just, we really want it. Yeah. We spend a fair amount of money on the event to make it great. Sure. Mm -hmm. But we we really are 100% are volunteer and just. Oh, sure. And this all happens at the fields? or All the fields in Hopkinton, yep, yeah. and this high school, middle school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but definitely June 18th. Yeah. I'm excited about Really that. excited. So let's take a minute and just transition a bit to what's going on in town. I mean, I feel exhausted after <laughs> Well, town I, meeting of the whole town I think we've had, we've is, had, we've had our, with that. We've had our carnival of democracy in town between the town meeting. The carnival of democracy. Yeah, the carnival of democracy we have between, you the know, election. town meeting and elections. Um, yeah, we've had some change in the guards and some new, you know, yeah. you know, we have two new selectmen. And I think, you know, we'll see where things go. I mean, this. So post-election, that I mean, time when everyone Connor gives D a group hug after it's all over, hopefully. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, this year wasn't as huggy as usual. But, um, <laughs> well, the, let's... Um, I mean, we. I think the. I think the 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 major news was that Connor Deegan, the, the young man that we had on here a few weeks ago, did win as town clerk. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be awesome. You know, we have so two new, and we have two new selectmen with Brendan Tedstone, who is a townie and brings a lot of very passion for this community to it. And we have Claire They're Wright, right. who has had 30 years of service. Her husband's a town doctor, and um, it's. A very different dynamic now to, of Absolutely. a board of selectmen. Man, Brian has a chair again, so it's um, oh, very good. Yeah, yeah so it's um, and you know we can, just yeah. can't say enough thank you to the people who step up to to volunteer to run. run. For, oh, I mean, these are uber volunteer jobs, right? Yeah, and um, to just put themselves out there and you know compete in that way. I think you know all things considered, you know, you know besides whatever, whatever the gracious transition of, you know, that yeah. process. The debates I thought were informative. HCAM did a great job Meaning, right, sharing course, course, information course, about things. Yeah. I, think, I think we also had a decent turnout. I think the Real Housewives, we did a lot of nudging and pushing out there to get, and you know, it was actually, to vote. No, it was yes. actually noted that there were more women coming out to vote and things like that. But on top this of that, the, so um, important. you know, it's a tough year when you want to, when it's a local election and there's no questions on the ballot and no big money ticket. Yeah. So um, we literally pulled five years of voting and realized we, in 2010 or 2012, something like that, one year that we had to look at a year that we had no questions. And we actually had about, we had 20% of the voters turn out, which is good. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, we, um, it's not great, but it was, it's better than it's been. 
that year that we had no questions, we had about 500 more voters show up mm -hmm. than did another previous year. And we oh, had this year we had 500 more, more than a, a previous year. I liked that there were no questions. questions. It was easier. Well, well I mean, <laughs> but I, we can't afford any questions right now. Which we, we, we've, we've got a DPW, a school, a library. Too much ink on the page. Else to pay for, but <laughs> but when, back to the voter turnout, and, and there are some statistics, and, um, and I wish I could remember the exact numbers, but women tend to not go out and vote until after they've had children hmm. and they tend to start really voting when they're 40 and that's something I really oh, want to see us change and I'd love to see us be more impactful this show on the page because your vote particularly in town incredibly impactful Right. incredibly important well, especially a town meeting which was you know I've lived here 18 years and you know you probably checked I've only been to town meeting <laughs> oh god you know maybe have I been 10 times in, in 18 years I don't know that I would be know. stretching it but honestly but it is a it's a fascinating process and you can see how the winds of change can happen just with you know a certain voice and a gathering of people supporters the, the more people that show up that create a more balanced representation of the town, the better the results are. Mm -hmm. Town meeting tends to have a core group that shows up every year. time and time again. They're mm -hmm. dying though, so I, <laughs> well, it's sadly, but no, but, but we need the, um, but we need the diversity and it's the same thing for the election. Yeah. And so we have now we'll see a great voter turnout in November because it's November. presidential election. But I would still like it's, to it's see more than, it's also we the will, impact. It'll be post prime. You know, in September we do have another primary. Election, we have the, the primary, primary for right. state senator and state reps. So we'll actually have you know Carolyn and, and Karen back on the ballot in November too. So it also does affect us locally within our district. But I, yeah. I'd Absolutely. love to the, see um, us rock the vote and have and more think, women show up. I that's think my I, goal. And I think <laughs> rocking the vote, rocking volunteerism when there are opportunities think, to be participating on boards get, and, 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 and get our young. Young. 18 year olds and 19 year olds. Well, we have an event voting. planned for them that yeah. they're coming up that's for 18 and 21 year olds that we can talk about in a few weeks. But the, um, I think one thing, and I, I'm going to shout out to a bunch of women right okay. now. Um, Nancy Cavanaugh, congratulations on school committee. Um, Margie Wiggins, you ran a great race she for absolutely. school selectmen. Uh, Elevated Kelly the conversation. Carp is now a new Parks and Recs commissioner. Um, um, Maureen Baumler-Miller is on trust. Mary Jo Lafriere is assessor. Um, Jennifer. Jen Jennifer Flanagan uh, won for Board of Health. Right. Claire Wright right. won for Selectman. Selectman. So we have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of women have gotten involved. A lot of RHH women have stepped up. And I think, you know, and a couple of these races were very tight and very tight going against kind of the, the same old that's been in the system for a long time. I mean, Kelly Carp's election was 32 votes different, so right. every vote counts. Jennifer Flanagan's is actually up for a recount because of nine votes. Wow. You know, and it, it's so a it fine gets thing. A little, yeah. But it's, you know, it shows every vote counts, so you have to get out, you have to vote, and you have to care. And mm -hmm. now that it's over, I think about, you know, folks just sort of shaking hands and kind of yep. coming together, or, you know, like or coalescing around everyone who's been elected and providing support to those who you know, didn't. And they, Segway you know, they to a, lot of a time. coming together event um, next Thursday, the barn concert. Oh, Everybody oh, needs to go. Oh, right. So this barn, this was the, do, do you, you know, know about the barn? barn? Oh, okay. my God. All right. Tell, tell, us, tell us. I'm so, just learning about it. So I tell right, me about so the Front barn. Front Street Concerts, uh, Binky and Jerry DeColibus have started three years ago. Um, they opened up their home. They actually had a barn they built there to actually store it's a the studio. Well, it's actually it was built, it was the original reason was to store Jerry's collectible cars mm -hmm. in the winter. And they the more and more they would they're, they're music junkies, and the more and the more they were going to meet these artists in Somerville and Cambridge and just couldn't having a harder time. But these were good artists. They're like, you know what, we can do something. So they um, they bought carpet, they bought a staging. And in the winter, it's the storage for the cars. And they actually there. built a <laughs> manual elevator in the, in the loft of the barn that Beautiful. brings all those things down, all the chairs, wow. and have brought in. So next Thursday, it's, it's a Real Housewives concert, open to anyone to show up. Guys we and girls. Do, yeah. it, it is requested to make a $20 donation to the artist. We have Danielle Maragia and Lisa Bastoni playing. Danielle is a 
phenomenal artist. She is the lead for Girls, Guns, and Glory. She just played last night at TCAN. Um, she's great. Um, so, can and, you and back up a little no, bit? What this I want a little bit different too. That Binky is not making all the food. So, the the thing that I want to uh, stress though is they don't make money on this. Right. Right. They ask for a about, donation yeah. and they give it to the artist. They also select an artist to use their studio space for periods of time to be an artist in residence to help support them. And, that was and, Ansel. And, okay. and to give, so it's an incredible event. Then and as an audience, it's just a you know, beautiful ground, so you're sitting inside the bar, or I think you can sit, you can bring a lawn chair, in the a winter, of wine. In the and, winter, know. it's in their house, so it's a smaller group, right, but, but it's an incredible venue. Yeah. In uh -huh. But in the spring and summer, isn't it, yeah. you're sitting so out you know, a bit. Bring your own, it, it's a it, it, this is a private family home. Right. You bring your own booze, you know, this time it's potluck, so bring a dish to share. Okay. Um, it's a bomb. And it, it's, um, it is a very, very warm setting. It's a very relaxing setting, and it's a chance to enjoy great music and enjoy time with everybody. So, is there anything Grand March and Prom tonight? Anything else before we, we're rewrapping soon? We're, can I just yeah. mention? Yes. 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 Yep, absolutely. In terms of youth getting involved in volunteers? Yes. If you go on the Sharon Timlin website under volunteers, you can sign up to volunteer <gasps> either for packet pickup the two what? days before or Good. for day of, and we Perfect. love that kids. Okay. Um, Adults, whatever, everyone gets involved. So great, get great a t you get a good T-shirt and <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. What else, Darlene? There's a lot else going on. Um, there's um, some sort of wine house party in Halston next week. Uh, there, <laughs> I and Random. I just lost my, I just totally lost my train of thought. But the um, uh, coming up on June 9th, I am organizing an event for uh, Carolyn Dykema. Um, mm -hmm. If you want. To learn more information, just reach out and contact me. Um, and there is uh, immediately going on right now at, the, one. at the senior center is um, their annual like plant sale, yeah. and it's going on today from nine to twelve, and again tomorrow morning. So I, I would check that out. It's great. ESL has Charlotte's Web going this weekend. Excellent, excellent. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for being you. here, Abby. Yeah. Yeah. Good so luck much. with the great race. To see you. Thank We'll you. be there. Have fun Thanks. tonight. Thanks for joining us, thank everybody. You. Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Thompson. Diabetes is one of the country's most prevalent chronic conditions, affecting nearly 29 million Americans. The disease is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and can lead to other serious conditions such as heart disease, blindness, kidney disease, and amputations. Another 86 million people, more than one in three Americans, are living with prediabetes, and nearly 90% of those are unaware of it. A person with prediabetes has a blood sugar level higher than normal but not high enough for a diagnosis of diabetes. And without lifestyle changes to improve their health, such as maintaining a healthy weight and getting regular exercise, many patients with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. Check with your doctor to get screened and tested, and act today. For more information, visit the American Medical Association at preventdiabetesstat.org.